welcome our very first speaker this morning. So, um, he is a digital health evangelist and a business growth expert, co-founder of Landarm, a strategic partnership builder, a pharmacist, very passionate about revolutionizing the healthcare industry through digital innovation. So this morning, this afternoon, sorry, we have the privilege of hearing from Fan Toyita as he shares insights on the digital diagnosis that is navigating the impact of medic tech and digital health innovation on medical practice. Please join me and welcome Sam Great Toyita. You're welcome, sir. Yeah, hello everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Hope everyone can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, sir. We can hear you. Okay, okay. Um, it's a great privilege to be here and I actually like a situation or an instance like this where people like-minded come together to see to it that we can actually share common knowledge, share common wisdom to advance healthcare. Okay, um, today I've been taxed to talk about digital diagnosis and its impact on uh, medical practice in terms of the innovations that we have. And it's quite um, a lengthy topic, but then based on the constraint of time, I will try to limit my talk to the time available to me. Okay, my name is Great Toyita, as introduced. I'm a pharmacist, I'm a digital health uh, uh, evangelist. I talk about digital health. I I'm also a co-founder of, uh, of a prop tech um, company and we do a lot. Okay, so basically okay. that's it. So I, like I, the uh, moderator has introduced and I've also done the same thing. Um, my name is Great Toyota. You can follow me on LinkedIn. Okay, so basically um, digital health innovations and how it's impacting healthcare. I'm going to limit it to Africa. I'm very sorry for those uh, coming from other continent. Um, I'm very sorry, but you can replicate whatever I'm going to say because it actually applies to every uh, every country around the world. Digital health is new, is a new frontier in healthcare and it's not just new in Africa, but new globally. And it's a dynamic uh, frontier that is changing as new technologies continue to emerge. And I want us as a start to imagine a, a, a future or even a present situation where people in the remotest area can have access to the best technology in healthcare. It is possible, but given our current situation, these are not what is actually going on in a lot of the societies we find ourselves in Africa, in Nigeria to be precise. And we believe that with emerging technologies, these things can actually change. And because of the challenges that comes with healthcare in this part of the world, we have tried as much as possible to collectively leverage on these technologies to see to it that those in a, a far to reach uh, regions of our communities get the best of healthcare. The reason for all this, the reason for all this, especially for Africa, is because of the disease burden. It's quite uh, terrible that Africa shares 20% of the disease burden in the global community. And only less than 1% is actually uh, uh, spent on healthcare. And as a result of this, there was a report from the uh, 2015 African income loss that 200 43 billion dollars were lost as a result of uh, uh, the disease burden and we believe in accordance to the research from McKinsey and company that there is going to be an increase in efficiency for up to 15 percent if we adopt digital healthcare tools and that's the reason why I think everybody here is actually a forward thinker looking forward to the point or the time where there will be efficient administration of healthcare all over the entire continent and probably all over the entire globe. 
but we cannot achieve this if we do not start from somewhere not just the disease burden in nigeria it was reported that less than five percent of healthcare users are actually covered by insurance so there is a huge burden on out-of-pocket payment and we believe that if there were tools if there were resources that could actually help mitigate this high cost of uh, healthcare a lot of people will actually live a healthier life. But apart from that cost, there is also a current Jakba syndrome currently going on in uh, the country, in, not just in uh, Nigeria, but across uh, the continent because of the, 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 the idea that people would see better uh, opportunities elsewhere. So our best brains are actually living. People in the healthcare sector are living. And the people who feel the most impact are the people who are left behind. And another issue that we are battling with, why we need digital health, is to uh, give equitable access to healthcare. Currently, you will agree with me that a lot of people have, um, uh, there is huge discrimination in terms of modern access to healthcare facilities. A lot of these facilities are more in developed uh, 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 areas than in rural communities where the high burden of disease cases are currently present. And we believe that with these technologies, we can actually make huge progress. We've heard about telemedicine. I can tell you firsthand about telemedicine, especially in Nigeria, because from my experience, we were one of the pioneers of, health, uh, of telemedicine in Nigeria, and we did a lot, especially in rural uh, communities, to see to it that people have access to modern technologies, to the best brains in healthcare. Uh, uh, people in rural communities were able to reach out to people in different countries to assess modern healthcare. AI technology, AI has been in the in the news of of recent and. There are a lot of things that AI can actually help us do. Virtual reality, augmented reality technology, in terms of gamification, can also be used for people with pains and other management cases. And blockchain, I will talk about this later on. But before we move over to these uh, uh, technologies, another aspect is a wearable technology. We know of the Internet of Things, Internet of Medical Things. but in, gen in January, just last month here, th th there were two cases that were reported, one of which was uh, a patient who was saved via the Apple Watch that someone was wearing, and it was able to detect that this patient had low oxygen saturation. This, one, this patient wouldn't have been alive today if these technologies were not available. The other one happened in the UK. She was on a flight and she uh, uh, collapsed. And when they searched her, they found a, a, an a, a electronic health record card in her wallet. And they were able to, you know, check her electronic medical record and see what she's suffering from. And that's how she was triaged. And today she is alive. These are works of digital technology and how they can actually help people live better and longer. Telemedicine, a lot of us actually know telemedicine. Telemedicine has been in the news thanks to COVID. COVID actually made these things much more popular. I remember started starting out uh, um, as a digital healthcare professional back then before COVID. A lot of people didn't know that these things could actually work. But COVID actually accelerated a lot of things. And today, people know telemedicine to be a remote healthcare uh, 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 access via telecommunication or video conferencing over the internet. And because of this, we are able to reach out to people in remote uh, 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 states, remote uh, villages. In Nigeria, the company I worked with last, we were able to deploy telemedicine uh, uh, facilities in different remote state, uh, uh, communities of uh, the country, in Kaduna, in Kano, in, in Lagos. And we reported a lot of people who had who had great and wonderful testimonies and people actually achieved better healthcare. 
AI, AI, I, I, I won't just talk about AI without telling us why we need to actually focus on AI because AI is a, a big money pool for a lot of investors. If you are a business person, business minded person, not just a healthcare uh, person, you would actually be looking at uh, uh, making more research, more solutions that are a a AI tailored to help in the healthcare industry. Um, uh, uh, it has been projected that the AI health tool will surpass 34 billion by 2025. And this is the reason why a lot of big tech companies are actually building resources in the healthcare industry. We know about the large language model, uh, ChatGPT, co pilot by Microsoft. And recently, uh, Microsoft launched a small language model that will run on our smartphone. And we should not uh, take away the, the this. Uh, uh, a reality that Africa has a huge mobile penetration. 70% of people who use uh, uh, internet in Africa actually access the internet via mobile. And thank God for what Microsoft is trying to do, building small language uh, uh, models of AI into our smartphones. So a lot of people can actually do a lot of things with our smartphone in, in the coming future. And AI uh, actually has a lot of pro promise with uh, uh, bioengineering in pharmaceuticals, uh, in uh, precision medicine, making drugs suitable for individuals and cutting the cost of drug discovery and reducing error in drug discovery. Another part that I would want us to talk about is the blockchain. A lot of people, when you hear blockchain, they talk of, uh, think of our cryptocurrency. I know uh, Bitcoin is actually currently seeing a surge and um, uh, uh, people were introduced to uh, the blockchain because of the currency, but it is more than the currency. Blockchain is a secure digital ledger for exchanging information and a, a, a major sector it will play a huge role is in the health information uh, uh, management systems, the EHR, the a a EMR. These um, uh, oftentimes, a lot of uh, players in the uh, digital healthcare uh, uh, sector have actually voiced out their concern about who has access to health records of individuals. What we are trying to do as digital health experts is to make the uh, a, a patient, the custodian of their health. That's the reason why we are building all these uh, um, applications, building all these uh, technologies to make sure that people can have access to their healthcare, have access to healthcare facilities, and also have access to their medical records. Currently in Nigeria, a lot of people who access the uh, healthcare facilities don't even know what uh, 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 they are treating. If you ask them, why did you go to the hospital? They don't know. But with digital health, we are trying to make the patient the custodian of their own health and also limit the issues of privacy, uh, 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 privacy checks and make it possible that they actually have their only uh, 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 authority to give out and to make changes when it is necessary. This is what blockchain can actually do. This is what blockchain is doing. And there are a lot of startups like the medical chain and even Boss IQ that are already building uh, 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 technologies around this blockchain and EMR technology. There are challenges to implementing and also for us to see the impact of uh, these digital health across Africa. Africa has a huge infrastructural deficit in terms of internet, in terms of building resources that are that are uh, 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 not interoperable uh, uh, across different facilities and also the framework at, for which we build these things are not actually well captured and these actually hinder the effective allocation of resources to different facilities. I, I, I know that um, there are these challenges, but if we take a cue from how the fintech uh, industry actually came about, especially making Africa the fintech hub of the world, a lot of the challenges that they had is similar to the challenges that we have, especially the infrastructural challenges. And they were able to navigate and leapfrog these things using technology. Africa can. We can actually still do this. We, even with the challenges that we have, we can leapfrog using technology. Interoperability challenges. A lot of people are building technologies, but these technologies actually 
are not interoperable. What I mean is this, a lot of people build different uh, uh, technologies, but then can't send and receive messages. An example is this, um, if like the example I gave about the lady who was rescued because of the EHR card that she had, if the uh, uh, system was not interoperable, it would have been very difficult for these persons to assess her a medical, a medical health record and actually save her. A lot of the people, uh, a lot of hospitals, I can actually tell you for uh, uh, a fact that are actually building individual uh, uh, technologies for EMR, for EHR, but these technologies are only for the facilities that have been built. This will not actually help us to wholly embrace digital technology we need to make uh, break the barriers and make that uh, make it possible for us to easily share data now there are policies that need to be put in place to make these things happen and apart from that we need to also continue these kind of webinars and teach people train people about the common technologies technology that are already available so that we can actually equip ourselves as healthcare professionals as digital healthcare enthusiasts as people who are interested in a better future for everyone using technology we need to get ourselves abreast with a modern technology and how to use this technology we need to train the trainers especially in rural area on how to assess and use technology and another challenge that we are facing is the fear of change a lot of people especially those in the healthcare sector healthcare professionals doctors pharmacies are afraid that ai is going to take away our job that is not the reality ai is actually human program yes it learns via the algorithms and machine learning and all but then you can't remove the the the, 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 the human touch of 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 healthcare, whatever we are building, we we uh, um, in time past uh, a couple of months or years ago, we saw the technology giants, Microsoft, Amazon, building healthcare facilities. But I can tell you that they are actually struggling, in, in even with their multi-billion investment in, in in these facilities. The reason is this: they think healthcare is all about technology. Healthcare is not just about technology. Healthcare is also about humans. We need to look at the human factor first before building the, the technology. Thank God for this community where we have the builders, where we have the healthcare practitioners who can come together, collaborate, and find out what pain point actually need solving with technology not everything can be solved with technology if not there won't be mass adoption opportunities actually abound for us to actually uh, see the impact of technology across board in healthcare we need to continue to invest in uh, the training of our of our uh, 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 healthcare professionals and also people who are interested in building this uh, this uh, uh, technology they need to come together and collaborate not just uh, uh, collaboration between healthcare uh, 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 enthusiasts, healthcare professionals, and those building the technologies, but also a government private partnership needs to be in place so we can have a lot of these infrastructural uh, setback. Internet needs to be made available for us to reach out to the unreached. And also, there should be laws and uh, formulations that, uh, 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 regulations that can help bring the, the walls of data privacy issues and challenges that digital healthcare actually uh, has currently and equity and access i would I, I, I this is one of my pain points a lot of the wonderful digital healthcare tools that are being built today are not cheap a lot of people don't have access to the apple watch it is expensive how would we expect the rural dwellers the old woman the farmer in the rural community to have such a, a wonderful gadget meaning we are building technologies but not putting uh, uh, into consideration people who actually need this technology the most so whatever we are building we should keep into consideration that there are a lot of people who are, don't have the the financial capability but actually need this so we should make healthcare equitable and accessible to everyone in conclusion i will want everybody the players uh, uh, uh in terms of healthcare professionals 
in terms of the government uh, uh, agency to come together to see to it that laws are formulated to ease the access and the adoption of healthcare technologies, seeing that we can actually accelerate and enhance the efficiency of healthcare uh, uh, infrastructure in the African sector and also reduce the disease burden that is bedeviling the African community. Thank you very much. I hope I have helped us by this short presentation. I believe um, the presentation will be made available to everybody. Sorry, I'm in a, a rush because of the time limit given to me. If you have questions, I'll be here to answer you. You can follow me on LinkedIn and we can continue the conversation there. Thank you so much. Are you still wondering what to expect from medics in tech community? Then, get ready for updates on cutting-edge advancements and the latest breakthroughs in the digital health space. Follow us for inspiring digital health stories. Most importantly, get ready to upskill your health tech IQ with our curated courses, webinars, and digital health events. Go straight to medicsintech.com now.